Hello and welcome to Doubles and Trebles, the final decks are in for the 2000 guineas to take place at Newmarket, Saturday the 6th of May at 4.40pm. Forget the coronation, you want to be watching Newmarket. I've spent months talking about the race, looking at the race, doing videos on the race since January. I thought it's a pretty good renewal for some time, I still think that right now. All the right horses have turned up from last year, the ones that had the form as the two-year-olds have all turning up here. Um, regular viewers will know my thoughts on most of the major runners, but we're going to try and have a quick run through all 14 runners in this video and maybe pick out a bet or two. 14 runners, it's currently good to firm, which would be perfect, but there is a warning to be had. There is some rain forecast potentially in the area. Hopefully it stays clear of the Rodi Mile in the next 48 hours. The first eight in the market are having their first run of the season. Nine of the 14 runners are having the first run of the season. So, although I do think it's a good renewal, it doesn't make it a great betting race for me. I can't lie. It's just too many question marks and too many unknowns about too many runners. As I've said many times, unfortunately, there is big question marks over some of the key runners. At least three of them might not stay. We'll come on to that as we go through this video. Starting from the top of the market, as you can see there, August Rodan, 6-4. to four. The, the markets are still forming at this stage, but... Six to four. Um, a four is the one to beat for a while. As far back as January, I said that 11 to two was too big for, for this fella. But it's six to four now, and that is short enough, let's be honest. The gap between August Rodan and the others at the head of the market isn't as big as the betting suggest it would be. Um, particularly on ratings, we're going to come to Little Big Bear, the second favourite. As you can see, August there is rated 118, and uh, Little Big Bear is 124. So on ratings, he isn't that far clear, but... He does appear to be the Aidan O'Brien slash Coolmore slash Valley Doyle chosen one. There's one of them every year, to be honest, and they don't all win. They don't all turn out to be that good. But he does appear to be the so-called chosen one from the Aidan O'Brien stable this year. I can see him running an excellent derby trial, to be honest, like um, his stable mate Australia did a few years ago. But will he be quick enough for a mile? That's the question. I'm not 100% sure. I've looked back at a couple of his races today. Um, that Group 1 win at Doncaster in October was impressive visually, but let's not forget it was on heavy ground at Doncaster. To throw up, you know, some straight split across the track, pull away boy veered across the track. Epic Cetus is, uh, you know, was never a miler anyway. So he could win. Of course he could win, August Rodan. But I'd rather be a layer than a backer at 6-4. to four. On to the uh, second favourite, Little Big Beer. One of three that have massive question marks about staying, in my opinion. He is officially the best two-year-old we saw last year after an electric performance in the Phoenix Stakes last August. He's been injured thereafter, though, and we've not seen him try anything further than that six and a half that he tried last July. Um, hindsight means that we can pick holes in that seven-length uh, seven length victory in that Group 1. The most impressive performance seen last year. That got him a rating of 124, which is pretty clear of everything in this uh, Guinness field on pure ratings. Um, Persian Force was behind him that day by seven lengths. He was on a downward slope by then. Hindsight, yes. Um, but a very good two-year-old nonetheless, Persian Force. Bradsell was injured during the race. Um, and he went off favourite, actually, Bradsell that day. Shartash, back in fourth, got no way near winning two Group 1s uh, when he tried thereafter um, when he was beat by, by Little Big Bear. So there is question marks to be had about the form. But we can all be clever after the event and pick holes in form. Um, and the form of his Group 3 win before um, on his penultimate start, as you can see there on the 16th of July, is stinking. Let's be honest, absolutely stinking form. Beat nothing that day. Will Little Big Bear stay? That's what everyone's the question on everyone's lips. Reading suggests yes. No name never is yet to produce a classic winner over a mile or anything further for that matter. Um, but he's come close a couple of times. Um, Wichita a couple of years ago was, was second by a very short distance. So Breeding suggests that... A little Big Bear may well get a mile, um, but this is a horse that visually, well, and on the form book, won over five furlongs twice last year. He's never raced beyond that six and a half furlongs, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, big question marks there. And at this point, we still don't know if Ryan Moore is going to be riding August or Little Big Bear. On to the third favourite in the market, Chaldean. He's in there at 13 to 2. There's not much to argue against Chaldean, to be fair. Let's be honest. He's won last year Group 3, Group 2 and a Group 1, including the Dewar Stake, which is often the best uh, pointer towards the Guineas. Um, and he's sure to be better as a three-year-old on breeding, as you can see there, by Frankel. But I've just never taken to this Chaldean personally. That's probably a bad reflection on me rather than the horse. He's got wins over Royal Scotsman, Indestructible twice, and Silver Knot, all, all of which reoppose in this race. Um, there's plenty to like about Chaldean. Um, but yeah, just is he, is he flashy enough? Is he good enough 
to win the duos. Possibly so on ratings. He's up there at 119 um, on official ratings. That's one pound in front of the favourite August Rodan. He's the leading hope from England. He's 13 to 2. Frankie de Tori on his um, retirement year to ride. And um, there is a lot to like about him. Um, he may well try and nick it and lead from the front under Frankie de Tori. He pretty much did, did that in the duos. He could do that again this Saturday. So look out for Chaldean. On to the fourth favourite in the market. We've got Royal Scotsman. Um, again, who I've mentioned was uh, beaten by Chaldean in the duos, just by a head, as you can see there. Um, well supported in recent days. is now as low as 8-1, to one, this Royal Scotsman. Second behind Chaldean, as mentioned. And Jim Crowley is on record as saying that the road Royal Scotsman that day to see get the seven foot on. It was his first try over it and he was staying on well, pretty well towards the finish. Maybe past beaten horses. There was a couple of disappointments in the Dewurst itself. Um, he is bred to stay a mile, this Royal Scotsman, and he is actually entered in the Derby. So connections clearly think he will stay. But I thought this horse last year was all speed, breaking the two-year-old record at over six furlongs at Goodwood, no less. So I think eight to one's about right for Royal Scotsman. Another one that to me, not on breeding, but visibly has got to prove that he stays to someone like me. Next in the market, Sakia, yet another horse that needs to prove that he stays a mile. Uh, big question mark, a horse I really like. Um, I think he could be special. I've said that on the channel a few times this year. An impressive Group 2 winner on his final start last year at Newbury. Newbury. Um, but we have no idea if he'll stay a mile, let's be honest. His dam was a terrible racehorse and barely stayed six furlongs. Um, he is a half-brother to a horse um, that stayed eight and a half furlongs in America. That was from a speedier sire. Zoffany, you know, is... His uh, tyre index rating is 9.4 furlong, so it, there's a chance he might stay a mile, and I think he could potentially be just class could see could see him through. But again, it's a question mark. We do not know, and we're going to find out on Saturday. It's all about stamina for Sakia. On to next in the market, 12 to 1, Silvernar. Um, he doesn't have the flashy profile uh, of some of the some of the names in this market with bonds next to their names. Um, but he was more than decent last year, this silver knot, and not a million miles away uh, from those above him in the market on ratings. He's in there at 12 to 1. I advised him anti-post earlier this week at 14. Is a similar price now, and I would happily do so again at 12 to 1. Um, a course and distance winner last October. That was in a Group 3 event. Um, and that's a race that has worked out really nicely, to be honest. Um, Epic Cetus, the second, was uh, second in a Group 1 next time. He won the other week at Epsom in a listed race. Holloway, Holloway Boy was third in that race. He was also went on to be third in a Group 1 behind the favourite, August Rodan. And the fourth and fifth ran OK at the uh, at the Craven meeting as well. So it's decent enough form. Um, if some of the question mark horses turn out to be special, they'll beat Silver Nut. If they turn out to A, stay, and B, be special, Little Big Bear could be special. Sakia could be special. August Rodan could be special. We know he stayed. If they turn out to be special, they'll, be, they'll beat Silver Nut. But Silver Knot's a solid horse, and I can see him running to at least a place for a trainer that had the 1-2 in this race last year, has got two runners this year, and William Buick, the stable's number one jockey, rides Silver Knot. On to the second Godolphin contender, um, this is Noble Style, the third and biggest question mark horse in regards to trip uh, for me, and the least likely to stay, in my opinion. His dam was an out-and-out -out six furlong horse, Eartha Kitt, some of you may remember from a few years ago. Three wins last year for Noble Style over five and six furlongs. He's unbeaten. I did really, really like him that year, last year. But he's already been injured twice. He missed Royal Ascot through injury last June. And then he missed the back end of the season, the back end group ones, the middle part of the viewers. He missed that through injury as well. So that would be a worry. He's coming. This will be his first run for 260 days. He's been off the track, uh, I think, even longer than Little Big Bear. Similar. Um, He's a second choice Godolphin um, horse on jockey bookings. But that didn't stop them winning this last year. James Doyle was so-called second-choice horse Caribus last year, and, and they won. Um, I love Noble Style last year, but he won't be staying. Um, I'm confident that he won't be staying. Unlike little Big Bear and Sakia, who I think could stay, I don't think Noble Style is going to be staying. That is for sure, in my opinion. On to Holloway Boy. He's already got a couple of mentions. We're getting into the realms of the contenders now that would need to take a pretty big leap forward on what we've seen so far to get involved this weekend. Holloway Boy's 25 to 1. I like him. I think he's, he's a solid he's a solid horse. He ran some massive races last year. A 40 to 1 winner on debut at Royal Ascot. But I don't think he's quite up to winning 
Group 1 racers generally, and I don't think he's up to winning this Guineas. He's got form lines with the likes of August Rodin, who he was third to at Doncaster, and Silver Knot. Um, trip no problem. Ground potentially could be if it's on the quick side. I'm not 100% sure Holloway Boy would want it on the quick side. So, Kohlberg and Christoph Sumion will be doing a bit of a rain dance, and they might get some rain. But yeah, Holloway Boy is 25 to 1. There's not really much more I can add there. Next on the list is Indestructible, who won the uh, Craven over course and distance. Um, a couple of weeks ago at the Craven meeting. Um, yeah, wasn't a great renewal. I thought the, the horse that he beat in second, the Foxes, he's an out-and-out -out derby contender. Um, a mile's definitely too short for him. This indestructible behind Chaldean on two two occasions last year, as you can see on screen there. So he's got, um, there's obviously a disparity between him and Chaldean, but he has been out this season. I think he's the first horse we've touched on that has run this season, um, which just shows you how much of a quandary this race is. Um Indestructible in the Craven, head carries to one side for much of the race, ran green in the dip, swerved across half the track when he hit the front. Not perfect ingredients to be winning a classic, in my opinion. At 25 to 1, I'd much rather be with Holloway Boy than Indestructible, that is for sure. On to another big price uh, runner here, 33 to 1, Dubai Mile. Um, almost certainly using this as some sort of derby trial, whether that be the Epsom derby, the French derby or the Irish equivalent. He did win a Group 1 in France uh, last October, but that's probably a Group 1 in name only, let's be honest. Um, he does look like a horse that likes a battle. He had to battle back and battle hard that day at St. Clou uh, to win that Group 1. Over 10 furlongs dropping back here is surely this is going to be a too sharp of a trip for him. He's going to want further in time. And um, wouldn't be completely surprising to see him run a decent race and maybe nick some place money or even four fifth, something like that, um, possibly. Um, because he is going to be game, um, but I don't know if this, this certainly isn't his, his, his um, priority this season. Let's put it that way. He doesn't look up to winning to me. Flight plan uh, probably should have won a listed race at Newcastle a month ago, but that is unlikely to be classic winning form. Let's be honest. Um, one of uh, three Carl Burke runners in the race. So uh, it, that's an interesting angle there. Um, yeah. Will probably be a decent horse this year, but he's unlikely to be winning uh, classics, in my opinion. Sharin, stable mate of um, Sakia for Roger Varian. He was slammed by Sakia when they last met in September. He probably prefers a slower surface, this Sharin. Um, another with question marks, really. He has been tried over seven. He probably got seven. He'll beat him three lengths in the green a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, another step up to a mile. Is he going to stay? Not sure. Uh, Galeron is the fight is the 100 to one shot. Um, that pretty much tells you everything you need to know. He ran in that same Newcastle race as flight plan, and he was a bit of an eye catcher to be fair. Coming through the pack from a wide draw that day, um, he would need a minor miracle to get involved here on what we've seen so far. He's rated 97 as you can see there, and the trainer actually Charlie Hills at the start of the season flagged the Britannia handicap uh, for this horse at the start of the season. So, yeah, there's, uh, that's all you need to know about that one. And finally, High Royale is almost certain to go off bigger than the 100 to 1 you can see on screen near the lowest rated horse in the field by some distance. And he is any price you like. So the question is, we've done all the talking. What am I backing? Silver Knot is the answer, 12 to 1. I would back him each way, but I'm going to wait until the uh, market comes out. We, you might get four places with there being 14 for us. Fingers crossed, we might get four places and back him at something like 10 to 1, something like that. It will be in the description below. I already advised him earlier in the week, so hopefully those that watch that are on. This Silver Knot, I'll say it again, I just think he's pretty solid. And you can make question marks about quite a few at the top of the market. A mile might not be far enough for August Rodan. It might be too far for Little Big Bear, Royal Scotsman, and Sakia. Chaldean is a is a solid horse, um, and that but that doesn't lead me to Silver Knight. I think he's the best value in the market. I fought that all week. To be fair, he isn't a million miles away on ratings, and he is the Godolphin first choice. So. Thanks to everyone for watching all the Guineas videos recently. Hopefully be back with a similar video for the 1000 Guineas tomorrow. And let me know who you're backing in the comments. Speak soon.